when I, uh, in 2010, I formed a national group called the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, CSPOA.org, and we're all dedicated to uh, preventing all injustice. And I believe that the best way to do that is to have sheriffs and peace officers in this country who are trained in the oath of office. Why do we take that oath of office and then never find out what it was about? I don't believe law enforcement can afford to do that anymore. We have to know that we are the guards of the republic. We are the protectors of liberty. We are the last line of defense for the citizens against tyranny. And, and let me tell you this too, it is a peaceful and effective process. And for instance, if anyone from government is abusing a citizen, it would be our duty to stop that sort of thing. I don't care if it's a federal agent, local officer, doesn't matter. We are dedicated to the Constitution and to the principles upon which this country was founded, and we will not let anybody's rights be violated by anyone. Well, who decides? Okay, so when I take an oath to tell the truth in court, who decides what I will say? Do I say, oh, well, I have to check with the judge first. Oh, no, I have to check with the legislature first. Oh, no, I have to check with my supervisor first. No, whoever takes the oath is the one who has to decide. It's his oath, okay? He's responsible for fulfilling that oath. What we say is he must know and understand the Constitution, so when he's forced into that predicament, he'll know what to do. He'll know what side. Because what side do we take in America? Always with liberty. A decree from the governor does not supersede the Bill of Rights. It does not supersede the Constitution. I must know and understand that before that happens. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it, Martin Luther King said that we all have a moral responsibility, a moral duty to disobey unjust laws. He's absolutely correct. Why would any of us obey an unjust law? Why would any cop enforce an unjust law? Mm -hmm. And I compare that story to Rosa Parks. She was arrested by two peace officers who swore an oath to the Constitution. Why? Because they did the wrong thing. They should have sat down next to her and escorted her home safely. Not enforce that stupid law. We should never be enforcing those stupid laws. So what would you, how would you argue, because um, I mean there's many, there's many um, law enforcement officials that have uh, decided to go along with uh, sanctuary cities. How is, is, is that something that... Uh... Yeah, as long as it's a sanctuary for the Second Amendment, we support that. And not sanctuary for... <laughs> no, of course not for crime, for, 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 for illegal activity. No, we're, I'm, we're all for, the CSPOA is all for legal immigration. But, I mean, you're, I was at Charlottesville, um, tons of Oath Keepers there, right. organization that you guys align with. Um, well, we refuse to go there. They were marching alongside literal Nazis, white supremacists, white nationalists of the worst vile kind. Uh, we were just making nice with BLM too, so. Yeah, I'm know. just saying as an organization, everybody, they... has a, everybody has a right to be there, you know. We can't help who shows up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can just associate yourself with a group that many different organizations well, maybe, have considered maybe, white nationalists but were they trying to keep the peace? Were they, they they, I promise the you they weren't. Really? Like, I was there. Well, yeah. I wasn't there, so. Yeah. I, I would argue the militias might have actually a little bit. Yeah. Um, some of the militias, the three percenters, but not not Oath Keepers. And I mean, I, I had an Oath Keeper in, when I interviewed in Ferguson that uh, said that he, he was keeping, they were keeping a sniper position on the protesters and were ready to shoot anybody that came near them. I mean, this yeah, is- Yeah, see, we, you, uh, you might be able to say that we're kind of associated because of the same, same uh, philosophy about the Oath, uh, oath of Office, mm -hmm. but we're not into providing security or militia um, stuff at all. I mean, you were at the Second Amendment rally in, in uh, Richmond in, in force. You're holding up a large bomb. Oh, I mean, you personally our made... People, yeah, I don't think our you people were, were yeah. Your people were. Yeah, we, w we wanted to go there for that, no yeah. question. In fact, I wanted to go, but I wasn't, I wasn't able to go. Yeah, because it's just, it's, it's just an interesting because they're going through and passing laws using democracy, going constitutionally. We're not a democracy. And we're not a democracy? No. And whoever, I mean, republic, whoever, whoever convinced you of that is lying. I'm sorry, a republic. We, it is we a vote constitutional on republic, yes. and there's a huge difference. Yes. yes. And you never heard any of the founders say, we're trying to establish the next great de American democracy or the next great democracy. Never said. I mean. So why do we keep saying that? I mean, it's hard to say that when you're keeping 
humans in bondage, but um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> by, uh, democracy but, does not mean freedom. Yes. It does not mean liberty no, I, either. I'm not arguing that it is. Okay. Um, sorry, I should have said republic. I mean, people well, are trying to pass laws. I just this is something that I'm trying to understand. And if, what is look, what is the like the fact that an individual sheriff can go against somebody who was elected, somebody who passed laws, went through Congress, did everything, and then a sheriff decides that his reading of the why why do was you think that I have an obligation to go along with any unconstitutional act or anything that violates well, liberty? You define it. No, you didn't. Let me finish. It's not my definition. It was right there. It's plain and easy. I know what shall not be infringed means. I know what that means. Because my legislature doesn't, bestows no obligation on me to go along. Just the opposite. I swore to uphold and defend the Constitution, and you, like everybody else, think I don't have to. That's the problem. We don't follow the Constitution anymore. Let's try that for a year. But it's your definition. It's not my definition. Everyone has a different reading of what the Second Amendment means. Okay. It's Some not, people mean. Read what? No, 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 no. Again, look at history about the Second Amendment. What did the founding fathers say about the Second Amendment? That only there you got should it. have guns. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Washington was one of the first people to, uh, to take guns. There was a large registration of guns. Well. Uh, I'm never saying that I mean, even the founding fathers made mistakes. Look at John Adams with the but I mean, Alien where Sedition do we Act. Define, you seem to define what you want to as the Constitution, what is the Second Amendment. My no, understanding, my wrong. reading of the, of the Second Amendment does not mean that free guns, no matter what, you can carry them wherever you want, what, do whatever you want with it. That is Why not? not my reading of it. Why not? What, where, where do you see anything the, to the contrary? Where's, where's the weapon? What's, is there a limit of, like, can I have what I can nuclear keep, weapons? What I, I know it's a ridiculous What I can keep and bear. Yeah. And that is a ridiculous thing to say, well, if you, if you can have that, you can have an atomic weapon or a tank. No, it's what reasonably that I can keep and bear where the militia was established and they have to be uh, res responsive at a moment's so notice. So as, as militia okay? then? As, well, the militia is the people. Yeah. And that's another thing you may have missed in your history lesson. But militia means the people. And uh, George Mason said that clearly. What is the militia? It is the whole body of the people. And the best and most effectual way to enslave them is to disarm them. Who gets to call up the, who gets to call up the military? Or who gets to call the up militia. the militia then? Okay. The Congress can, mm -hmm. uh, or the president. I, Congress sets the rules for militia, but the sheriff definitely can, and the governor. So the sheriff seem to be the most powerful entity. Why? A congressman can't. A, I know. a duly elected congressman Why is the sheriff so powerful? Look at your history of the sheriff. And also, look, he is the only elected law enforcement officer anywhere in the country. He's the only one. He gets his power directly from the people. He reports only to them. They're his only boss. He has no other boss except the people. And he promised them that he would uphold and defend their constitutional rights. And so you're saying, no, he doesn't have to if the legislature tells him not to. If they pass a law, if the rest of the you think all laws government. are good just because they can happen? I'm not arguing. I certainly am not arguing that. I'm arguing the fact that a, a sheriff elected by the a couple thousand people yeah. get to decide over his county. a governor, over a president, over everything. The governor's not his boss. He doesn't report to the governor. He doesn't report to the president. When they are wrong, what do we do? I'm going to go back to Rosa Parks. Hang on Rosa. Because if they're violating the rights of one individual, my job is to stop it. They should, those cops shouldn't have taken her to jail. They did.